So hello everyone, it's your girl Jail Beauty 87 here, aka Grace, and today we're gonna get into my favorite product so far of 2021. So we're just gonna do primers, foundations, concealers, and powders, cause y'all know me with my extra self. We got honorable mentions in this, and then we still gotta do blushes, bronzes, and highlighters in another video, and then we gotta do eyeshadow palettes. And then we gotta do lip products because I'm so extra. I'm probably gonna have like a whole week of us just doing that stuff because I'm just so extra like this. I know it's ridiculous. Don't judge me too hard, honey. But we're gonna start off with these honorable mentions and then we're gonna go into the um products I tried that I've been loving and using a lot so far this year. So I'm gonna start off with the Kat Von D Good Apple, what is this? Skin Perfecting Foundation Balm. I wear the shade Tan 74 and this along with the other foundation from them I really like. It's called True Portrait, I believe. This is what it looks like. I don't know why I'm opening it like it isn't clear and you can't see it. You know, it's the specialness in me. Anyway, this is what it looks like. Um, I did a video on just about everything you're going to see in this video so you don't have to be alarmed. I like this product. My whole thing is because it's summertime, I haven't really been able to try it out extensively like I have with the other foundations that are out here. Which is why I don't want to put it in here. But it's not like I don't like the product. It's just more of this is going to have to be more of a winter thing for me because, you know... I have oily skin and it would just slide off my face, especially with a mask on. It would just be a whole hot mess and we're not, that's not the message we're trying to convey to the public, okay? So, the next one I have is a couple of cream bronzers. So, I have the Fenty Beauty Cream Bronzer. I had so many things to try this year, so I didn't get a chance to, like, fully, truly use this a whole lot. But as you can see, it has been loved. The packaging is dirty. I do like to use this a lot at home with the other one. It's just when I have to film a lot and I have to wear makeup normally, I'm normally here. So, that's why um, it hasn't been used that much because I've been using a lot of the other newer things. And the things that I told you all are, like, too dark for me to wear now. I mean, too dark for me to wear in the winter, so I have to wear them now. So that's why this hasn't been getting that much love. Because I know both the Fenty bronzers work for me in the summer or the winter time. And that chocolate one will work just fine. Last honorable mention I have is the NARS Sun Kissed Creaming, sorry, Bronzing Cream in Casino. So the reason I'm not using this that much now is it's because it's more of a neutral shade. So I know I can wear it any time of the year. And right now I'm trying to work through some of the newer things I have that, um are darker since it's summertime when it comes to fall and winter i'll probably brush this one out a little bit more but because of the season it is right now i'm like i just don't feel the need to you know use this product so that is why it is here in the honorable mention section because it's a great product and i really like it it's just more of do i really need it now sis no no i don't i couldn't remember if the soul look um what is it, the soul body one from ColourPop came out this year or not so i just decided not to put it out here but it is a good product and i have been using it somewhat during the summer and just putting like the darker um powder bronzers on top when i'm trying to conceal this a little bit, bit longer now let's get into the stuff i actually wanted to talk about that i've been using this year this bobby brown vitamin enriched eye base now i know everybody loves the face face but i am obsessed with this eye base like i cannot wait till the sephora sale because honey i will be grabbing some and look at my little sample size it's almost empty i tried it out from sephora because you know they always give you a sample i was like sure why not i'll try the sample you know like you want her to try a sample i love that stuff i love it almost as much as i love the um i love it more than i love the milani supercharged one i left it in the bathroom i'm just too lazy to get up but it's like it's more that's more of a color correcting thing that's just a really good hydrating under eye um primer if you're not a person who likes eye cream if you're someone who wants extra hydration before you put on your concealer and other things it's a great product for that and i absolutely love it and recommend that you get it girl just get it don't ask questions just get it so i have two primers to talk about i feel like one you shouldn't be surprised about it is the tatcha the liquid silk canvas i love just about all things Tatcha, so this should come as no surprise to you that we want the Tatcha liquid silk canvas in here. I have the little sample size that I was too lazy to just drag the um, full size out, and the sample size I guess is in the bathroom or somewhere. I don't remember where it is to be honest, but you all have seen I have a review on my channel about it. It is a wonderful primer who smooths out the skin and makes it really nice. And the perfect thing is it's not like the balm, so you have to try to keep it with a little coin to like scoop it out and make sure you get the right measurements you can literally just pump them on your hand and rub it in like you do a normal primer which is why i like it better than the balm even though i have finished a complete balm one and i don't usually finish primer so that's how much i love it but you know i love tatcha and since i love skincare like ingredients um things especially when it comes to primers i was definitely excited that they came out with a liquid version so that one i definitely recommend this elf what is this mint melt cooling face primer and i haven't been using this exact one i've been using the jelly pop but i was just lazy and didn't bring it out the bathroom plus um when i was first using it i had forgot that they did they had relaunched it this year because they hadn't when i was using it which is another reason i wanted to show this one since i know this one launched this year 
But I've been loving primers like this once it's grip and hold on to the makeup better just because since I have to wear a mask a lot of the time when I am wearing makeup now, I want to make sure it lasts and sits well. I've um, been using the powder trick sometimes too when it's hot here in Chicago, but if it's not, I don't waste my time doing all that because ain't nobody got time for all that. I'm trying to get as much sleep as possible and, you know, like building an extra step to put powder on top of primer sometimes. This is not what it is for me. So, but I really like this primer. If you don't want to buy the um, Milk Hydro Grip, I definitely think that's a good alternative. They also have the Hard Candy one that's a good alternative, but I've just been sticking to the Elf one. So that's the reason I showed that one. But the Hard Candy one is just as good, and I think I did a video on that too. Or I featured it in the video. I don't think it was like the star of the video, but I'm pretty, I know I did a video on it. So now let's get into some foundation. So I'll start off with the drugstore one because everything else is pretty much just expensive. Okay, it's me we talking about. Like, so everything else is like luxury or high end. It's nothing else cheap in here besides this. But this is a wonderful drugstore foundation. This is the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation Hyaluronic Acid Long Wearing. I love this stuff. Like, this reminds me of the Rare Beauty Foundation at a much cheaper price without the doe foot. That's what this reminds me of. It is absolutely wonderful, and I love it. I couldn't remember. The, I thought the Rare Beauty came out last year, not this year. That's another reason I featured this one because this one actually came out this year and then they came out with the matching concealer later on in the year. But I really love this foundation. It is amazing. It's only like 11 bucks. The only thing is the shade range they have at Ulta isn't that great. I don't know if the shade range on their website is better, but I wear the shade 092 Warm Spices. It's a really nice foundation. If you like that your skin would better, but you still like to have a decent amount of coverage, you would like this as opposed to like the skin tints and the what are the, the skin, skin blurs and what what are skin moisturizers or whatever they call them. I don't keep up with that because as y'all know, we're a full coverage queen here. As you can see by the face, it's full coverage now. We don't play that. Your skin be better. But if we do, we're using this because it gives us a good amount of coverage even though it's your skin be better. So it looks natural on the skin, but I can use my concealer to cover my dark spots, put this on top, have that natural your skin be better, but still have the full coverage I like. So for people like me who want to be a part of this your skin be better movement, but no, you're not finna be out here not fully beat. You need to use something like this. And I would definitely recommend it. Because honey, for $11, it's amazing. Then you can use your coupon at Ulta and get your $350 off. Or wait and use the 20% off coupon, which will make it, I think, like $9 or something. Girl, that foundation is amazing. Get your hands on it. Now, these I found at Nordstrom's Rack, believe it or not. These are Burberry foundations. So, I got these for $15 bucks a pop. I have the... Fresh Glow Foundation and the Matte Glow Foundation. So what I do is I mix these two shades because obviously this one's just a little bit too light and this one's just a little bit too dark. So I mix them so that way I can wear them down in the summertime and in the wintertime I'll probably still mix them just so um, since I haven't gotten a little bit darker they'll match my neck. But these foundations are amazing. If you could find them at your Nordstrom's rack, I definitely think you should go get them. Because, honey, when I saw them in store, I was too excited. I was sad that they didn't have my shade, but I was like, 15 bucks to pop when these are normally an extravagantly high amount of money. I could not resist it. And the formula on these is beautiful. I mean, it is beautiful. They had a cream contour stick that I really like too, so I got that as well. You'll see that a little later on because I was using it a lot in between using all these other uh, products I need to use. But yeah, this is what it looks like. It is absolutely amazing and I think you should try them out. Now, obviously this one is more glowy and this one's more matte, but it gives you the perfect your skin but better when you mix both of them together like I do. I'm not saying you have to buy both and mix them together, but like for 15 bucks a pop, I wasn't going to leave them behind and not have a good shade match. So I just went ahead and bought them because the other foundations we have talked about is like 50, 60, 80 something dollars. So I felt like that was a steal compared to what I normally have to pay for foundation. Okay? Okay. Next, I couldn't remember if this came out this year or last year, but I've been using it a lot, so I figured I'd go ahead and put it in. It's the Huda Beauty, what is it, Full Filter Skin Finish Buildable Coverage Foundation Stick. So I really, really, really like this foundation stick, y'all. It's amazing. This is one of those Your Skin But Better Full Coverage things, too. So this is the high-end version of that drug. So when I was telling you about it, it gives you that Your Skin But Better, but gives you really good coverage. It's something you want to have in your corner. I love this stuff. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I wear the shade 500G Mocha. That's the shade I wear in all her foundations across the range. This is the same shade I always wear. So I like the fact that she did like cover effects and makeup for everywhere. Whatever shade you wear is the same shade in all of Because sometimes NARS mixes it up and Maybelline mixes it up and you have to guess. But this one did not do that and I definitely appreciate it. Thank you. You very much, Huda. And thank you for no scent, too, because people always complain about her scents and stuff. So she finally got the point to stop doing that. And I appreciate it. Thank you. 
thank you very much but this looks beautiful and natural on the skin and still gives you that full coverage as look without having the cakey full finish like the new faux filter one she came out with does that was a little more luminous but it does like that full coverage thing as well but i don't necessarily like the way that looks so that'll be in the worst products part but that's just with me toward the end of the year i'm not gonna try to do worst products with this too because child i got a whole bunch to do and ain't nobody gonna have all of that okay so the next foundation i have to talk about is the gucci foundation now remember i told you i wasn't gonna buy this just because the horror story i heard mel thompson talk about but then jackie wore it and she had it and then they had the sale going on when she had did her video for it so i wore the shade 410w it's um medium deep and um i just bit the bullet and went ahead and bought it just because i thought it was so gorgeous and i had to have it in my collection so this is what she looks like nice little expensive glass frosted bottle it looks beautiful on the skin like this is another your skin but better foundation that like you have to build up the coverage on this though whereas i feel like you don't have to build up the coverage on the huda foundation stick you do have to build up the cover on the um catrice one too but i mean like it's 11 dollars. i'll build up the coverage for 11 dollars. you know whatever but this is a gorgeous foundation i absolutely love it and i'm so glad i got my hands on it and at a discount only thing that sucks is since I waited so long, y'all didn't really care about the video. But it's cool because I'm glad I got it in my collection and I will be wearing it more. So, this was another favorite I've been trying to wear a lot. Then we have the Tom Ford Trace of Soft Matte Foundation. Now, I remember Mel talking about how much she liked this. I wear the shade 10 Chestnut. It does oxidize, so that's why I got this shade instead of getting a darker shade like I had planned to. Because I wanted it to match my... um face perfectly and i knew it was going to oxidize so i didn't want to take the risk so what i did was uh so with this one it's really liquidy and you have to build it up a lot and i'm not really big on tom four foundations just because i feel like you have to build them up and they're not necessarily worth the price that he charges but i went ahead and bought this one and i'm so glad i did because i had mixed feelings because michelle wong was talking about how she didn't like it but i have to remind myself michelle has dry skin and mel and i don't have dry skin so since I heard somebody who didn't have dry skin talk about how much they liked it. I went ahead and bit the bullet and bought it. And it was amazing and, and way better than I thought it was going to be. Because, like I said, I haven't had a look with Tom Ford Foundation. I always feel like Tom Ford stuff is just overpriced, to be perfectly honest. I've only found, I think, one thing that I really like that I think is worth it. And that's like his highlighter things. Otherwise, I'm never really impressed with his stuff. But this is a gorgeous foundation. And I'm glad it's in my collection. And I plan on wearing it a whole lot more. And I have been trying to wear it more when I am at home. But since it's an expensive thing, I make sure I leave it at home. <laughs> so now we're going to get into some... Next we have the Lip Bar Quick Conceal Caffeine Concealer. I wear the shade 4 in Cinnamon. This is what she looks like. I like this concealer. It reminds me a lot of the Marc Jacobs one I bought later on this year. It's really nice. It gives good coverage. Only thing is you get a small amount, but it's not like it's an outrageous price for the small amount you get, like the one I'm going to talk about after this. So I feel like it's really comparable to the Marc Jacobs one. And since Marc Jacobs is rebranding, and I don't know if the form is going to be the same, I don't know. But I saw the Marc Jacobs concealer at TJ Maxx today for like $12.99. That new one that just came out with the concealer and foundation. So you might want to go over to TJ Maxx and see if you can get it a better deal. Because I know on Sephora it's 20 bucks, but why pay 20 bucks when you can pay $12.99, girl? Because even with taxes, that'll save you probably like 5 bucks, and it'll be like 15 I don't know. But this concealer is really nice, and I um, definitely think you should try it out. Now, I did not like the foundation, but we know I'm not a serum foundation, girl. I need coverage, and I feel like serum foundations in these tints and all that they're trying to come up with is not giving me what I need. So that's why I don't rock with it. But, of course, I have to talk about the Marc Jacobs Extra Shot. What is this? Foundation? Con caffeine concealer and foundation now i've never used this foundation so i can't tell you about it because i never plan on using this foundation absolutely not girl they tried it no who the hell paying this type of money for this to be a foundation and concealer they funny i wear the shade tan 330 but y'all know i really like a nice brightness underneath the eyes and this is just a gorgeous color for the brightness i like underneath my eyes and then i use a more subtle powder if i don't want it to be as bright but i still want to use this concealer and then when i do want my yellow brightness then i use like a yellow banana powder you'll see in a minute that'll work well with it I love this product. I love it so much. I bought a bag of it during the Sephora VIB sale, which made mine 20 bucks, and then now it's 20 bucks. So um, I definitely think you should check it out if you want to watch my video to um, make your decision before. Because, like I said, you might run up on it on TJ Maxx for $12.99. Definitely go do that. But I really like this concealer, in spite of what other people said. Because I heard a whole bunch of people didn't like it as a concealer or a foundation. I like it as a concealer just fine. I just dare not try it as a foundation. Because this is too little a foundation for the price they charge. And, honey, they tried it. But it's a great concealer. And I got my backup just to make sure I had one. Because, honey, I was not risking it. Now let's get into some powders. So I have setting powders. Then I... I 
Then I have um, press setting powders. Then I have a couple of foundation powders. So I'm probably going to start with the loose powders. Then we'll get into the um, foundation powders. And then, sorry, we'll get into the press setting powders. And then we'll get into the foundation powders last. And then we'll be done with this portion of the video. I still got to do bronzes, blushes, highlighters. And then I got to do lips. And then I got to do eyeshadows. Because, honey, y'all probably got to get a whole week of this. I hope you enjoy. But let's start off with the one size powder from Patrick Star. This is, what is it called? The One Size Ultimate Setting Powder. Y'all know if Patrick Star can do anything for me, he can make me a powder. I um, was hoarding the crap out of the one he made with MAC. And I was so glad when his line came out. I was waiting for a powder drop. I'm like, Patrick, where's the powder? Patrick, where's the powder? Patrick, where's the powder? Then the powder came in. I was like, thank you, Lord. So I had a sample size to leave here to use. And then I got the full size from home. I mean, for home. But I brought it with me so you all could see it. So I didn't have to try to bring the minis out the bathroom. But this is what it looks like. It is a gorgeous powder. looks gorgeous on the skin. And I got the one for my skin tone this time. Because when he made it with MAC, obviously it was translucent. So that all his fans could appreciate it. But now I have one for my skin tone. When it melts into the skin, it looks amazing. Absolutely stunning and wonderful. This is a great powder. I don't care what anybody says. I love it. I also like the Beauty Blender powder that a lot of people say they don't like with the gemstones in it. I really like that powder as well. I have two shades in it. That's how much I like it. I have a darker shade called Chocolate for the summertime for foundations that are too light to help blend them into my skin better. And then I have... Um, I forgot what the shade I need is. I believe it's called Nutmeg. So I have two shades in that powder because I like it that much. And plus... Because it's a pandemic, I didn't want to be returning products. I try not to return products as a general rule. I just try to make them work for me. But the next powder I have to talk about is the Laura Mercier Translucent Honey Powder. They just came out with a new light chasing, a light catching powder, if you will. But this is the shade Honey. This is one everybody's been waiting on to have an under eye powder from her. Because you had to use a translucent one forever. And I prefer a yellowish banana powder. So that's why I'm excited that this powder came out. As soon as I saw it, I was like, yes, I need to try it. So I got the sample from Sephora as usual when you get a $30 purchase or whatever. And then when the sale came, I went ahead and bought this full size. Because I really like um, her powder. Sometimes I'll go through phases where I really like it and want to use it a lot. And then I'll go through other phases when I'm not that crazy about it. And I just think it's okay. But for the under eye, I feel like I would like this one consistently. It's just a really nice powder from the eye. And I like it. So, on to the next powder. It is the translucent, sorry, radiant translucent setting powder from um, Tatcha. This is Tatcha the Silk Powder. If you all remember, this came in the Trend Move box. I didn't get it from the Trend Move box. I was actually one of the first people to get the video up for this particular powder. I think I was like the third person my skin tone to get it up that I saw on YouTube here. I like this powder. I'm not crazy about it. However, I feel like it's good to dust all over my face when I finish to give me that radiant glow from within. I would not advise you put this underneath your eyes at all because then you're just going to look like you just rubbed highlight all underneath your eye and that's not cute. You don't want highlight underneath your eyes. That's not cute. That's not cute at all. So I don't recommend that you try this um, for underneath the eye. I recommend that you use it as a buffing powder like Mel Thompson talks about. You put your powder brush in it and you buff it all over your face after you've done all your makeup just to get that extra radiant glow from within if that's the type of look you go for. Like I, I have a couple other powders I like to use for that. Like y'all know I love the um, NYX High Glass one. That's good for doing what I just talked about. And then um, this other powder I'm about to talk about is good for that too which is the Dior, what is this, Face? I think it's called powder no powder um it doesn't say on here radiant matte finish but this is what it looks like I wear the shade 6N neutral I haven't seen any other shades besides neutral shades in this powder so I just got the one that matches the foundation I actually have on the foundation now on this side of the face so as you can see it's matching my face quite nicely I really like this powder to dust over my foundation after I um you know put it on and conceal and everything so it's a good setting powder for me but I figure you can use it as a dusting powder as well I just prefer to use it as a setting powder on those days when I'm trying to get your skin a bit better nice looking skin because I feel like when I spray my face it just melts into the skin and makes it look even better and I really like that so I really like this powder for that I've been using it quite a bit when I'm at home but obviously I leave it at home so it hasn't been here for a while so I've been using the Giorgio Armani one instead which is nice I just like the Dior one better and the Dior one is cheaper than the Giorgio Armani because if I remember Dior is 40 and Giorgio Armani I think it was like 60 something because you know it's Giorgio Armani and they just have to be extra I feel like Dior backstage is a little bit more reasonable but still luxury if you will but I hear that one's made for makeup artists too so that might be why it's at a more reasonable price point since makeup artists would have to buy a lot of different colors I don't know. But the next powder I have is the Kosas Velvety Cloud Set Powder. Um, I forgot what the sh sh 
Shady name is mine. I think the shade name is Velvety is mine. This is the Cloud Set powder from Costas. I really like Costas. I was happy to get this powder in my collection. Now this powder does oxidize, so the shade I bought is a little too dark, but that's fine. With me, this is another one I told you all I would use when um I have a foundation that's too light. So then that way it'll blend into the skin and um make it blend for my um, face now. So I would use this with like winter shades of foundation I have. So then that way I can wear the winter shade now. For example, that Morphe when I tried, the shade mask they gave me was off. But when I put this on, it makes the foundation match my face for right now. So this powder is for stuff like that. So I've mainly been using it in the summertime because it's matching probably my summer glow a little bit better. And then I can use it in the wintertime when I want to wear. I mean, I can use it in the summertime when I want to wear winter shades too. It's just a beautiful powder. I really like it. If you want a uh, more coverage with it, you need to use a Kabuki Kabuki brush. And if you want lighter coverage, you should use just a simple powder brush. But it's a really nice product. It's a really nice powder. And I think I bought that during I either bought it during the Sephora sale. I just went ahead and bought it. I don't know. But next I have the LYS Beauty Translucent Setting Powder in the shade Ambition Medium Tan. This is great powder from underneath the eyes. The only thing is I feel like it always gets caught in the lines underneath my eyes when I use it with a brush. So what I have to do is I have to put my sponge in here and pat it in where the creases on my eyes are. Because otherwise it will not work for me and I do not like that at all. It's really annoying. But it is a really beautiful powder so I just make it work with the brush and then I use, I mean I, with the sponge and then I use a brush when I put it on the other places I highlight with concealer. But it's a beautiful powder. It's just... Be advised that you might want to use a sponge if you have creases underneath your eyes like I do. Because if you use a brush, they're going to get stuck in the creases. And that's not cute. And that's not what you bought it for. Next, I have the Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation from Fenty in the shade 410. I was going to buy my foundation shade 420, but then it ended up oxidizing. So I'm glad I watched Andrea Renee's video before I just went out and purchased it. This is what it looks like. I feel like it has kind of a yellowish golden undertone to it, which is nice because um, when it oxidizes, it'll still give you your same coloring, but it'll just be your actual like foundation shade, which I thought was nice. Now, I don't just wear powder foundation on its own. We know I can't be doing that out here in these streets with all these dark spots and imperfections going on. This would not work for me. However, if you like to wear powder foundation, I guess it will work for you nicely. I know Tina the Fancy Face did a review where she just wore it as a powder foundation, and if I remember correctly, I believe Andrea Renee did as well so you can yeah but so I was saying you can um use this as a foundation powder if you'd like or you can sorry my mic is in the way you can use this as a foundation powder as you know full coverage for your face or you can just use it as a finishing powder like I do I use it as a setting powder more for like extra coverage for the days when I don't want to put on concealer or when I don't feel like messing with a um loose setting powder I would go in with the LYS when I just showed you and then go in with this and then that way I don't have to do as much work and as usual use kabuki brush for the most um product and then you would use like a um a powder brush for like lighter application but that's a really good Fenty pack that I've been loving from this year. Now, this one, I don't remember if it came out this year or not. I know they re-released the um, hydrating version of the um, Synchro Skin Foundation. But this is the Synchro Skin Self-Refreshing Cushion Finish Powder Foundation. I wear the shade 510 Suede and all Shiseido products. If anyone was curious, I'm releasing the foundations. I haven't tried their concealer, so I can't speak on that. But this is what the powder looks like. It's a beautiful shade. And what's unique about this foundation is that it helps refresh the makeup on its own so you don't have to do touch-ups or like blot for oil and things like that. So that's what I really love about this line. I love the Synchro Skin Foundation, the original one, not the hydrating one. And then I love this to put on top of it because it's like I know they're just going to keep refreshing each other and helping each other out. And then I don't have to do like hardly any work and don't have to worry about my makeup looking crazy at the end of the day. So those are the things that I have been loving as far as complexion goes since um, this half of 2021. A couple of them, like I said, I think they came out last year. I wasn't 100% sure, but since I do like them and I'm still using them from time to time, I figured I would throw them in here. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Remember, you all are diamonds. I'm going to film the blush parts and highlight a part of this next. Then I'll probably film the eyeshadows after that just so I can get everything out of the way. Um, I think I might be too tired to do lip products today. We might have to do that next week, but I figure that's fine because I didn't bring a whole bunch of lip products with me to show, so I don't have to leave a whole bunch of them behind. I'm mainly trying to keep my collection together and move all this stuff back because I have to move a lot of stuff back to my house. Um, but anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Remember, you all are diamonds. I'll catch you guys in the next one, okay? Be blessed. Bye, girl.